Hello again, <clears throat> Leon Turner of Trend Controls here once more. Um, I'm, today's topic is uh, tagging uh, within IQ Vision and also um, how you can use tagging to your advantage. The specific example we're going to end up with today is building a hierarchy. Um, hierarchy is very useful for building in customer views so they can see only what you want them to see and in an order that makes sense to them. And all of the hierarchies um, we're going to build are all depend, dependent on tagging. So to start, what we're going to do is build uh, a tag dictionary. Now there's some built in already. Um, that you get the Niagara tag dictionary in there, which uh, exists uh, when you first install IQ Vision, and you'll see you've got a, a Niagara dictionary in there. So the tag dictionary service should already be there, as should the hierarchy service. If it isn't, it's a fairly simple matter of putting the services in as required. So we've got the hierarchy service there. And under the tag dictionary, we've got the tag dictionary service. So if they're not there, you can add those into the services directory, uh, services folder here. Um, I've ordered these so they're up the top. Um, they don't have to be in any way, shape or form. I've just done this so it's a bit clearer and easier for me to flip between the two. The very first thing I'm going to do is, is add a brand new uh, dictionary service. So if I look down here, there's a smart tag dictionary. That's the one we want because we're going to use some clever technology to apply these tags. So I don't have to worry about um, what they're called and that sort of thing. It's all going to happen automatically in the background. And if I if I call this chilled beams, it'll give you some idea as to what the working example is going to be. Yeah. Let's go with chilled beam actually. So what I'm going to try and do is put together uh, a tag dictionary, which applies some tags automatically, and then also build a hierarchy so that we can sort out anything that's uh, relevant to specific chilled beam units anywhere in our strategy. And I do have a few bits built into my strategy already, into my project, um, specifically some controllers which have this sort of thing in them. So you'll see there's quite a lot of points, various different points, numeric, numeric and Boolean, doing all sorts of things, such as picking up faults. Uh, we've got binary fault de detection, uh, set points, and so on and so forth. Um, they've all got the word chill beam in their label there, and that, that's kind of important. We'll come back to that. Um, discard the fact they're all false and down and don't exist. Uh, uh, once again, I'm working in isolation in my workshop. None of these things are real or live. However, this would apply just as well to any site that, that actually was up and running, or indeed you're working offline, which is what I'm doing. So if I come back, it tells me my namespace cannot be empty. Now, the namespace is um, a letter or letters or a word um, which ends in a colon. And that's the way we pick up how um, Niagara is going to address these things. Now, if I open a new window, I can give you an example such as um, n colon name, for example. That would be a perfectly valid tag. I won't bother searching for anything right now, but I'll do that in a little while, but it, needless to say, it's asking me to put a namespace in there. And for me today, I think we're going to use CB for chill beam and don't need the colon in there right now. So that's all good. And it says, OK, and you'll see the Niagara one has actually got N up here. And if I wanted to look at all the tags, all of these would come with the N colon and then whatever this is. OK. So there's two different types of tags we're going to be looking at, really. One is called a marker tag. Uh, and all that is is really a, has it got that tag or hasn't it? Um, and the other is um, a string tag. So that will be um, the name of the tag and then some specific text which will help, help group things together using that tag. So for example, again, going back to my Niagara one here, tag definitions, geo address is a string. That's because geo address could equal a house address or uh, you know some kind of other geographic information and you'll see th the difference so is it a network yes no what is its name and that's a string and you can see we can put a default value in there not going to worry too much about any more of those but coming back to our chilled beam one now I'm only going to really do one thing with this for now and that is put a tag in there a marker tag so my tag definition is going to be Chilled beam, just like that. Now, case is important, so do make sure you're consistent typing these things. And if you throw in the odd capital, 
letter where you didn't mean to, things will go very badly wrong very quickly. Now what I'm going to do is apply a tag rule or build one, which will then go away and hopefully apply chilled beam to anything I particularly want to identify as belonging to a chilled beam unit. And that's quite a simple rule. It's a Boolean filter rule. If I add this in and say it's is chilled beam. And that'll be a yes, no kind of thing. So the condition, the filter. So what are we going to, what's going to mean that we apply this tag? And it just so happens in true engineering fashion, I've got one prepared already. So up here, you can see N colon display name. That is the standard Niagara bit. Everything will have one of those like chilled beam. So it's got the word chilled underscore beam in it somewhere. And that is what the Boolean filter will be. If it fits that description there, it will get this next, this other tag added. And to finish that off, I drag my chilled beam tag into that list. Now I could put a bunch of tags in here so that anything that conform to that statement or statements will get this tag or tags. So I could build up quite a complicated set of rules here. Just to test this, and I sort of mentioned this earlier, if I type this into my search piece up the top here, and again, don't forget, it's n colon display name like chilled beam. And I hit return, I can test this quite quickly. So there we go, this is all the things in my station, and I did say I'd done a little pre-work, forgive the cheating, but you can see there's an awful lot of things already that, can, that actually conform to that statement up there. And all of these things should immediately get given that tag. So if I come and find one, seemingly at random and click on it and say edit tags. Now, because I've done this automatically in the background, it's an implied tag, not a direct tag, but you will see CB chilled beam in the background there. So it's actually applied that completely all on its own. Now, this is sort of um, live. So if I want to change this, I can do it as and when I want. Um, and it will, it will do it all uh, live if you like. Now again, up here now, I change the search terms, so I'm looking for CB. Oops, helps if you spell it right. Chilled beam. These are all the things that now have that chilled beam tag applied, and you'll see it's exactly the same list as previously, as you would hope, hopefully. <laughs> so that's my tag applied. Um, now the simplest way to build a hierarchy out of all of this is to include a view somewhere down here, which has that already in it. Now. In my hierarchies here, I have nothing right now. If I add a hierarchy, so I go to my hierarchy palette, and I'm just going to add a hierarchy straight from scratch. And we are going to call this, surprise, surprise, chilled beams. Now, at its, at its simplest, um, a hierarchy is a target, so where we're going to aim it, and that's the scope. Uh, I don't necessarily want to look at the whole station. In fact, I don't necessarily want to look at all the drivers even. And in my case, I am going to limit it. I'm just going to limit it to my trend system. So it won't look anywhere outside that for anything that fits the bill. And the very next thing is to add something called a query level definition. That's that one. And you need this at the bare minimum, really. And we will call this chilled, just to keep it nice and short. Now, my query is not going to be terribly complicated. I just want to catch anything that says the word chilled beam in it. That's it. Or that has that tag. And I could change that as I wanted to. And if I come down here and refresh the tree node, you'll see I've got one hierarchy now, which is built out of that. If I go up here and change the name, chilled beam list. I might have to create cache again. Come back down here. There we go. And just to prove it's live, and it's, it's built that piece. Now that, if I click on it, just gives me a whopping great list of everything that's got that added to it. 
So it's just one off list. Now, obviously I could do the same for boilers, uh, chillers, the chilled beams, fan coil units, anything I wanted. I could sort this out on, um, well, pretty much anything that exists in the station and is uniquely identifiable through the tags. And I don't even have to have a set of predefined tags. I could use the Niagara tags that pre-exist to do this. And if I pick up one of these points and look again at the, um, the tag manager, sorry, edit tags. I'll come on to the tag manager in a minute. You'll see there are quite a few in here already. So N colon name, chilled beam enable, and so on and so forth. So I, I could just use one of these pre-existing ones. No, I've chosen not to. I've chosen to be a bit smart about it and use something which I can use elsewhere, such as this chilled beam. But it is entirely plausible that you could just use the ones that, that exist without you doing a thing. Now that's all very well and good. And we got this whacking great long list. If I want to be a bit more um, helpful and provide a bit more of a navigation tree, I can add some other ways to sort that list out. Now, if I come up and I add yet another uh, hierarchy, so I'm actually going to duplicate this one. We'll start with the same thing. So my controllers is, I think I've got three fake controllers and I want to, um, they've all got um, different lands. Now, if I come down and I'll show you. There we go, there's, there's a couple there. Now, um, the LAN, obviously we've got 20, 56, and 99. I can add that as a tag if I want. Now, all of those all exist under the same LAN. So what I'm gonna do is go to a, a particular view, Tag Manager, quite a new one, this. And I'm gonna add all these points off that LAN, and I'm gonna take away the point folder because I don't really want that on there. Now, it's quite easy for me at this point to add a tag to all of these, and I'm gonna call it CB underscore, oh, sorry, CB underscore CB LAN, just like that. And hit OK. Oh, no, wait, I'm going to turn it into, it's a string. So now all of these actually exist on LAN 99, I think. Sorry, 56. So if I type in LAN 56 as the string tag and hit OK, they should all get that tag. And again, I can test this pretty easy. So CB, CB LAN, and the tag name value, sorry, the value is 56. I can go back and edit it if I wish, by the way, and change it after the fact. I can test it up here. So CB, CB, oops, LAN equals, and then I'll put the quote marks around it, LAN 56. And there we go. That's everything that's now got the word sorry, the, the tag LAN56 in it. And you can see that should be everything we wanted. Fantastic. Now I've taken the liberty of cheating horribly. If we check, I've already done it on some of these other ones. So we've got LAN20 on all of those, LAN56 on all these other points and LAN99 on those ones. Now to get those sorted in my hierarchy, which is this one, what I need to do is add something else. So we've got the the query level definition, which basically sorts out everything I want to, to get. So that's the, that's the sort of selection set. I've got a group level definition here. If I add that and call it uh, grouping, for want of a better thing. Now the order is quite important. I need to move that up one. Oops. So what I'll do it here. So it has to appear, the, the order of these two is very important. Now I want to group by CV LAN. Save. Now hopefully, if I do my little create cache piece again and come down here, we should have chilled beam by LAN. Now if I drop down, you see LAN 20, 56 and 99 have appeared and underneath each one are just the points that correspond to each of those LANs. So any one of these, if I double click on them, you'll see that the tags should agree. So LAN 20 appears under LAN 20. I should mention at this point, there is a working example of this um, on Dr. Technicare, our knowledge base, which shows you how to build 
something akin to 963's device viewer um, using the hierarchy so you can build a, a list level type view of the the, the controllers in this in the um, project listed out by sites lands and then the outstations and so on if I want to go one step further you may have already noticed but I did the same thing with this unit number so chill beam six so all the uh, points on this particular LAN are already done. The, the points on here are not. So if you can see, we've just got the, the, the CB LAN set up. If I go back to my view again, the um, tag manager, and there are other ways I could do this, incidentally, I should mention that. The, pro, the prog program manager is a good way to do this to the thousands and things of, at once, if you so wish, but I'd advise some caution. So you can see we've got several units on here, one, two, and three. If I just pick out one, well, all the ones on unit one and add a string tag, in fact, what I'll do is I'll add it on all of them and then edit it, save a little bit of time. We'll set them all to one and we'll edit it in a second. So now if I pick up two, pick on the unit and edit it, I can change that to two and the same thing for three. Oops. There we go. Now that's done and it's all done live, as I said, so all the changes will be made straight away. So what we should have now is a slightly different list under here. Well, there would be if I'd done what I was supposed to do and actually add uh, the means to group it. So I'll add another one, which this one will be grouping two, for want of a better word. And again, we want to reorder that so it's above. Now I can change the order so that it groups by LAN and then unit or unit and then LAN. One of those will make more sense than the other, I suspect. We'll try this one first. So this one, I want to group it by CV unit, save. And we'll do the same thing again, just to make sure everything's up to date. Clear cache, oops, and create cache. Come down here, and every time you do anything like this, incidentally, you have to refresh the tree node, otherwise it, it won't keep up. So it's, I've done it the wrong way around, which is sort of good, I suppose. Maybe, maybe, no, maybe this is the right way around. So you can see now we've got LAN 20, LAN 56, and underneath those, we've got sub groups, which are just the points we need. And there you can see all of the units are now divided up as they should be. And that's quite a nice usable view. <clears throat> I hope this sort of starts you on the road to looking at tagging and what it can do for you and more importantly maybe what it can do for our customers in making them these nice clear views it's worth pointing out the user profiles or the user configuration can actually limit their view just to hierarchies you you wish and it is an incredibly good way of simply allowing them to see just what you want them to see or maybe no more so it's quite a, a, a useful tool i hope this was useful uh, and um, hopeful i look forward to talking to you again in the near future Goodbye.